All right. I'm videoing this the third time because I'm really trying to keep this video short. This is the likes and dislikes that I personally feel about the Akai MPK Mini Plus. Again, some of this stuff maybe can be done in a, either a firmware update or it may be something that I have to go into the MIDI editor to do. I do realize that there are some things that you can edit and change and fix and do. And there may be some other options out there. Maybe a script wrote that's better for this board for Ableton. I don't know. It does have an Ableton feature in here. I do like that, which Ableton, once they update, hopefully will show this particular board, the MPK Mini Plus. Currently, you got to set it to MPK 49 and then put your MPK Mini Plus 1, port 1 and port, port 1 on the in and port 1 on the out to be able to use the transport bar with it. The pitch bend wheels, phenomenal, really good. The keys, small, but I love them. They're small, but... With my fat fingers, if I can still play it, then I'm sure for most people it'll be fine. Um, I don't use the pads that much, but those pads feel great. And I've had an MPC Live, MPC Live 2. I've had an MPC 1 at one point. And these feel, to me, remind me of the MPC Live, right? MPC Live 1 and 2. They remind me of those. You got two banks, A and B, so you basically only have 16 pads. Okay, so I would use those for drums. Maybe, maybe not. Not that really big of a deal to me. I can drum on the keys and feel just fine. Um, you do have these endless encoders. These are nice endless encoders. I think they're plastics, obviously, but they're they're still pretty nice. The way they flow, they're smooth. Um, eight of them, they supposedly work in Ableton. I have not figured out how they work or what they work on. I've not been able to achieve that. So I will have to look into that a little bit more. Love the MIDI in and out. I'm actually currently on that right now, even though you see it plugged in because I'm just using that for battery purposes. But um, um, let's see what else. I don't like this. This is worthless to me. I don't see the point of it. I don't even think it's working. I mean, it shows it's working. I just don't get it. So I'm going to leave that alone. But that's one thing I, I think they could have saved. Um, personally, if they had not put this here, they could have moved Akai Professional over and put the MPK Mini Plus logo up here. This whole space could have been that, right? And then they could have put down here some more buttons that you could program yourself to be whatever. Now, that would have been great. Kind of like these knobs can be used for certain features or they can be programmed to be something else. It would have been cool to have more buttons. These buttons remind me of the MPC-1 buttons. They're clicky. Hear them? So they remind me of those if you want to know the feel. Um, so that would have been cool. Honestly, the pads would have been nice if they put the MPC-1 pads on these and then just and try to get them all on here. I, I don't know how big, what's the difference between the size-wise on the MPC Live versus the one as far as the dimensions. I don't know that portion, but these do seem more like the MPC Live uh, pads to me than they do the MPC One. I felt like the MPC One was smaller. So it would have been cool if they had used every bit of space here, as much space as they could, and maybe even move like, like, even if you weren't going to put pads or buttons that you could redo, like, take these six here and drop them here and then make, utilize more space. Shoot, I would have been cool if they took all these over here and drop, look, put all the dang buttons on one side, okay? All of them here, move these knobs up a little bit, just up a little bit, and then load it up the buttons down below. And then just take this whole space. And the screen is neat to have and all. I get it. But I ain't gonna lie. I would rather have 16 pads on the actual thing. Or make these the size of the ones that are on like the, um, 
what is it? The, the Novation keyboards. They could have made them like small like that. The Novation size ones. And then you could, uh, then you would have, you know, all 16 on there. And that would have been cool. And even if you, because you could get rid of the bank button at that point. If you're just going to give me 16, I don't need to have a bank button. I could just have 16 pads and be done with it. I just, I think that would be cool. Or put a button where you could go, you could scroll up through the pad. So you have 16 total on here, but then you could, you know, kind of like your octave over into the, to the uh, next set of pads, whatever. That's just what I would have rather seen on it. Um, and the board is super, super, I know they got to make, they're trying to make it portable. That's, it's a mini board. So it's not supposed to be huge, but the plus they could have added, you know, just some other things. I think that would have, I mean, you got a lot of space right here. Like even below these pads, there's a lot of space. So they could align some buttons there and put more pads out, even out across here and made them a little bit smaller. Got all 16 on there and that would have been much, I don't know, that would have just been better to me. Uh, it's just preference. Doesn't change the fact that the board is still nice and it plays well. Note repeat does work. The art. Tap tempo works on the board. Uh, I I gotta see. I was gotta see if I can MIDI map the tap tempo. If somebody knows how to do that, I did. I tried it in Ableton. It won't just do it on its own. So I don't know if there's something I have to change, like a CC button or what, to get that to work. But it would be cool if I could uh, map the tap tempo to Ableton and be able to tap in my so that the board matches what's on in Ableton. Um, I don't know, because then it would make the note repeat better, right? Because the note repeat's sitting at 120 BPM. Right, so I would have to go in, and I think you go shift, note repeat, and then you go over and change it to match. Let's say if I wanted it to be, I don't know, 70, let's do 72. Sixty-eight. Change the division. So, yes, it works. Yes, it's cool. It's got a sequencer in it. Probably won't use it. Not with Ableton. It's just no purpose. But if I do choose to use it, it would be if I could use it in conjunction with the EP-133 as soon as that guy arrives. It's uh, back ordered. I think they said around December 7th, maybe something like that. But, you know, if we get it, I'm not in a rush for it. It's not a necessity. It's just a fun item to create in a different way. That's really how I see it. If you see it that way, you won't be so disappointed with anything that isn't working properly in it. Um, I just hope the speaker works. It'd be nice to not to be able to use it, but probably won't. So I'm not going to get my hopes up. They're so hit and miss on the quality control. It is what it is. All right. I'm going to keep this video under 10 minutes. We're at nine minutes, right around nine minutes right now. But um, please feel free to ask questions in the comments. Uh, I will answer the best I can. If I don't know the answer, I'll just tell you I don't know. Um, if I'm wrong or something, feel free to say, hey, I was able to do this or whatever. Be respectful. Like, I'm going to be with you. Um, I am wrong on certain things. I don't mind saying that. I'm definitely wrong at times. But I'm just telling you what I know as of now. And mind you, I've only had it, like, since last night, maybe. So I've had it less than even a day. Not even a full day. I did do watch reviews of other people who are more knowledgeable on the product who had it longer. So I got a lot of information from them, but I also learned some stuff from the Kai website too. So it's not it's not a complicated machine to use. It's it's a MIDI controller that has a few extra features. But if you need this type of controller, if you don't care about having bigger keys and you don't mind the mini keys, 
this controller will work. If you don't like mini keys, don't touch this one. It ain't worth your time. You're going to be frustrated. Now we're at 10 minutes. I'm going to try to stick with 12 minutes. <laughs> I keep saying that, but I'm being serious. So again, if you don't like mini keys, don't get it. If you're buying it for the pads, you might be disappointed. You only got two banks and each bank only has eight pads. It's not like 16 and then you go to, it's literally eight pad, uh, 16 pads total. So bank A is eight, bank B is eight. Um, this joystick, I, I still don't know what that's for. Uh, these knobs here, I think they're programmable or MIDI mappable at least, I know for sure. So you can MIDI map them um, to whatever you're gonna use, especially if you're using Ableton. And, oh, there's a home button. Hmm. No one, that's how you get out of the sequencer. It just hit me. I, I tried to use the sequencer. And I tried to record this video and do the sequencer. It's not hard to do, but I was like, how in the world do you get out back to the home screen? And obviously there's a home button there. I should have just looked down at it, but um, <laughs> all the white stuff in white, usually you shift to get to those, shift in that particular button. Uh, it's pretty simple. There's global settings right there. Um, and the step sequencer, if you're gonna do steps, you just use the clicks here to change the steps. There's also a live sequencer in this one, so you can do it live. So you could play, like for some people, they don't want a step sequence, which is probably more me. Then I would sit there and just play it live in the sequencer and then let it record out. However, if I'm recording into Ableton, what's the point? Ableton has MIDI capture. Ableton can record directly in there and I would save myself some time. There's no point. But if you do using a drum machine or something else that doesn't have a full sequencer or a sequencer that you like, then this would be a cool option to have. Um, pads feel great. MPC Live pads, roughly what I would say. And that's really it. Mini keys, really portable, super thin, super light, maybe three to five pounds at the most. But I'm thinking it's around three pounds. And that's it. Well, I'm going to end this video because I said say 12 minutes and we're at 12, 10 and pushing. So I'm going to go ahead and end it. If you like the keyboard, grab your one. They're about 170 plus tax. Um, and I think they're worth it for me. I think that's a good deal. Solid deal. Anyway, that's it for this video. I'm out.